we do we do a whole lot of mobile web development, right? Yes. And it's important to to be properly cross device testing stuff, so it looks beautiful and it's fast and performant and everything. We try. We try. Um, there are a lot of tools involved in that. Uh, so what, what what do you use? There are a lot of tools out there. What I use those probably a bad example. Like. I think one of my main issues is a lot of these tools are really hard to just get set up and working all together and just happy. Um, so for me, I use browser sync, but I'm really heavily relying on dev tools like the device emulation mode. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm still doing the browser wobbling backwards and forwards. Device mode has got presets for all the devices in there. I know, but the, the problem is like dev tools takes up X amount of space and then you've got this, this is why you've got you've got like so I've got a second monitor specifically for my full screen dev tools and you can Yeah, but then I need a second monitor. Like I do a lot of it just on my laptop. Nothing else. So I, I get what you mean though. Like yeah. it that like if I could just stick to device mode I would, but dev tools and just doesn't munge well with me in my head with okay. device mode. Like just on this one screen. Yeah. That's the only thing. All right. It sounds sounds like something we could be doing better. Um, so I use I use Browser Stack pretty heavily. Uh, it's great for like just so Browser Stack is like a cloud based service where you've got a subscription and you can just like fire off URLs and, and open them up and different OSs, different mobile devices. Yep. Um, here I've got like uh, my site loaded up on iOS on a on a like a an iPhone six plus. Yep. And I can control I can control the device. I can navigate on here. It's not just a static screenshot, so it's actually pretty useful. Yeah. Um, and I find Browser Stack pretty useful. It's got you know support for screenshots and all that stuff. I've found Browser Stack to be really useful when you want to do like manual testing. Yes. So you're literally you're you're making changes, especially when you do local host tunneling. Mm -hmm. You can just make local changes. It's almost immediately back on the emulator. You can scroll around, and it, it's great for, like I say, manual testing. I've used Source Labs where I've actually created scripts to literally just take screenshots of it, um, run simple tests like how long it takes pages to load, different things like that. Um, and that was quite a while ago that I did that. Like now you've got things like web page tests for performance and everything. But Source Labs seems like it's more geared towards like automation of tests. Yeah, so like, like that. we use we use Source Labs for things like continuous integration. Um, it's like so say you've got a pull request that you want to make sure works across all your target browsers. Sauce Labs is perfect for just like nailing that use case. Yeah. Um, browser Stack's really good if you're, I think if you're working on personal projects, I know there are people that use Browser Stack in sort of a CI setup as well with Selenium. Um, and what else? So I think you and I both use Browser Sync, actually. So I never used to use Browser Sync because... And then you met me and your life was better. No, I, I learned about Browser Sync because of you. But the thing that you never told me was that you, in, so when you're in the gulp file, you can actually just define a proxy for um, browser sync to actually go through. So at, at some point, I expect you to read like it's the, never gonna the happen, readme Addy. for it's the never gonna happen. Why do you think we keep on doing this? <laughs> so you can define a proxy, which in this case, I just say the proxy is localhost. And then what happens is I can have an Nginx server and then browser sync will create a separate port and it will just inject the JavaScript that Browser Sync needs to work, which you never told me about. So I've only just learned about it. But it means that now I can have the devices like this, mm -hmm. and it'll sync scrolls, it'll sync touches, it does whatever I tell it to do, and that's like yeah. awesome. And yeah, it's just any visual changes that I make in terms of code, it'll just reload, and it'll just happen, which yeah. is really really nice because you have devices like this on your de like desk. Or I'll even have it with a couple of browsers just on my desktop machine running. And I can just do um, any kind of commands on here, any actions, and it's just matched across all the browsers or all the devices. Yeah. Browser Sync is awesome. Like we, I think we covered it in another episode, but it's also got this really nice UI for configuring you know, network throttling, configuring um, you know, do you want it to sync clicks and forms and, and scrolls and all that other stuff. Um, so Browser Sync is probably my favorite cross-device testing tool, I'd say. Um, the other thing that we use pretty heavily is just like regular old VM setup. So yeah. some people some people use VirtualBox. I use VMware, um, but it's just it's really nice being able to to easily fire up like old versions of VMs with IE and Edge and all those other things on them. Yeah, I don't have a Windows machine, so I pretty much rely on the the, the VMware images. Well, sorry, the VirtualBox images. Um, because yeah, that's the, that's the, for me, it's much easier than using something like Browser Stack or Source when I want to do a quick test to do yeah. it locally. Um, 
It works a little bit better, in my opinion. And it's the same with um, emulators for mobile devices. Like, I've, especially Safari's, like, the iOS emulator is really, really good. Android, eh, not so much, but, you know. So, good. actually, there's something that um, I, I came across when I was in Tokyo recently, and it's a tool that's been in development for two years, and it kind of blows the water out of any other cross-device testing thing for Android. Yeah. Uh, it's called, I think it's called OpenSTF. It's by, um, it's by two guys that, uh, that work at CyberAgent. But it's just, it basically, it's the kitchen sink for mobile device testing. Yeah. Um, it gives you this really beautiful visual catalog of all the devices you have connected up. You can easily control them. You get, like, are, are you familiar with DevTools' screencasting feature? Yes, yes. So this basically does that, but for all these, like, other devices you've plugged in. So it's like, so DevTools screencasting is great for a single device. This is great for, like, a multitude of them where you want to set up a device lab. And this is very much, like... I, I always see this as like a supplement to something like Browser Sync because this basically helps you control all the devices yeah. in terms of like launching the browser and pointing them to a particular URL, which is the one bit that I hate about all of this. And it's pretty much all I've ever done with the mini mobile device lab stuff with Pete LePage. Um, like that entire focus is like, how do I launch a browser with this URL? And it seems like they've basically taken that and then just put it on steroids and made yeah. it ridiculously this is, awesome. This is just the best thing ever. It's so, so awesome. So I guess we just need to go set it up. Yeah, I definitely want, want to get this set up in Google, and, and there's a lot of people that would benefit from it. No, 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 we're going to keep this for ourselves. Just ourselves. Just no, us. Nobody else. No one else can touch it. Never.